there is lot of opportunities as well as there is lot of the disadvantages that will come front so in order to face those things one of the strategy is corporate restructuring in case of conglomerate merger the merger between two unrelated firms happens the risk factor the profit of one firm can be adjusted to the loss of the other firm company is in to understand that we need to do financial evaluation so following other approaches hello everybody i'm divya ma'am assistant professor from department of commerce and management lecturing with the ashram first grade college mysore to the temple of excellence it's my honor and privilege to welcome you all for the session 1 on your unit 4 advanced financial management that is your merger and acquisition the topics for today's discussion corporate restructuring merger and acquisition types of merger advantages and disadvantages of merger motives of merger and acquisition and your financial evaluation of merger and acquisition so in the last class we have completely discussed about your dividend decision walters models and godel's model the chapter is clearly understood and it is for 15 marks for your examination so kindly go through your previous chapter that is unit 3 dividend decision moving forward so when we hear the name adani ambani when we hear the big giant companies that is predominantly playing in the market what is the secret that the company is growing so much what is the secret behind making so much of profit what is that secret when we think about that it is all about strategy it is all about the planning it is all about the executions that the corporate level people do in order to bring a growth and survival in the business so here we are in that concept called as corporate restructuring corporate is nothing but a company a business corporate restructuring what is this restructure the word itself says restructure means reorganizing the business so we are in the modern business world in the modern business world we have a cutthroat competition to take up that competition in a friendly and in a positive way there need to be a lot of strategies that has to be made in order to bring the growth and survival to the business so one among those strategy is corporate restructuring what is this restructuring as i have told you reorganizing the business in order to survive and in order to grow in a particular market so let us look into that restructuring of business is an integral part of a modern business enterprise it is an important part of modern business enterprise because due to liberalization privatization and globalization there is lot of opportunities for a business to compete across the globe so there is lot of opportunities as well as there is lot of the disadvantages that will come front so in order to face those things one of the strategy is corporate restructuring the globalization and liberalization of control and restriction has generated a new wave of competition and free trade so there is a lot of because of this policy making because of the economic conditions because of our economic policy there is lot of competitions that is there in the world this requires restructuring and reorganizing of business to create new synergy 1 plus 1 if you if five people individually they sit and do the work what will be the uh, effective what will be the production if a person together if five people together work in a group and what is the production that you can see the there is a difference in the impact there is a different in the efficiency as well as effectiveness so this is called as synergy effect the energy that gives uh, if you do it in a group that that brings a new form of energy to the business so that the organization can bring up the new strategies so restructuring usually involves major organization changes such as shift in corporate strategy so this restructuring deals with corporate strategy what are those cost what are those corporate strategies it is nothing but internal restructuring as well as external restructuring internal restructuring 
you divest in some business, you make certain demerger, hiving off, non-core business, all research and development, all these are internal, reorganizing the business through this strategy, which is internal to the company. Again, restructuring that is external to the company. Therein, you talk about merger and acquisition and forming of joint venture and having a strategic alliances. If you every day, if you read out the newspaper, economic times, you will get to know. So Reliance is coming up with new strategic alliances. They are getting with new policy making. So what is all this? It is all about restructuring strategy. They restructure, they reorganize the business. They re-change the business internally as well as externally in order to survive in a particular market. So kindly read Economic Times newspaper every day basis in order to understand our business in a better way. Moving forward, so you are restructuring external restructuring takes place through merger and acquisition so this merger and acquisition is a corporate restructuring external strategy so what is this merger what is this acquisition you already know so for a better clarity we will understand the meaning of merger and acquisition in the next slide moving forward what is a merger a company and B company, if together will become C company, then it is a merger. A company merge with B company. If you want to take up an example in a real business world situation, you your Vijaya Bank merged with Bank of Baroda. St State Bank of Mysore merged with State Bank of India. If you want to see the things merger, there are a lot of examples that you will get in a real situation world. So one company, if it is taken over by the other company, if it is acquired by the other company, then it is called as merger. A merger is a corporate strategy to combine with another company. So your A company combined with B company, they become B company or some company, A company, B company together will become a C company. That is a merger and operate as a single legal entity. So it operates as a single legal, legal entity. The companies agreeing to merger are typically equal in terms of size and scale of operation. So they have to be equal in size, they have to be equal in the size and the scale of operations. That is called as merger. When one company takes over another company and establishes itself as a new owner, then the purchase is called as acquisition. Merger A company, merge with B company, with your bank, merge with Bank of Baroda. That is a merger. What is acquisition? A company, B company will become C company. New form will happen. New, another new owner. It takes a form of a new another owner that is called as what? Your acquisition. So this is merger and acquisition. It is a one of the corporate restructuring external strategy. So in detail we are studying. So why this merger and acquisition has put in your financial management? Because finance is a lifeblood of every business. So while taking up any decision with respect to finance, you need to think twice because there will be a lot of risk at the same time. Risk assessment has to be done. Financial evaluation with all the aspects has to be seen. For that purpose, this merger and acquisition have put in financial management in order to, to make you all understand about the financial evaluation about the merger and acquisition about the particular company. Moving forward, types of merger. We have horizontal merger. Horizontal merger is a merger where a similar business activities, if they merge, then it is called as horizontal merger. Horizontal merger, similar business line. The business line will be in a similar way. They are into FMCG, FMCG company, FMCG company merge, then it is horizontal merger. Vertical merger, there will they will be in a different business line activity. For example, suppose A company is in production department, production manufacturer, production company and B company is what? Your distribution company. So A company with a similar product, what they, they will be into different industries. For example, A company will be in what? A company will be producing, B company will be distributing. So such a 
combination of merger happen then it is called as vertical merger in vertical merger we have forward merger and backward merger so when a company combines with a supplier of material so directly supplier of material with the production company if they merge together then that is called as backward merger forward merger distribution company and the consumer together if they merge a consumer company the company backward merger and when it combines with the customer when they combine when they merged uh, with a customer then it is called as what they are called as a forward merger moving forward we have conglomerate merger conglomerate means two different activities two different business industries they are of different activities they are of different business line so such a merger is called as conglomerate merger for example a company will be a automobile company b company will be a jewelry company a company will be in a automobile industry b company will be jewelry making two different business activity if they merge then it is called as conglomerate merger con generic merger the word itself says, the word itself says what it says generic generic means what similar so they are of the same industries food industry fmcg industry they are into same industry but they are catering the different product line to the customer such a merger is called as con generic merger so what is con generic merger con generic merger is a merger when they are into similar industry similar production activity both the companies but the product the business line are different they are they will be catering different products so such company merge together then it is called as con generic merger next we have reverse merger the word itself says reverse merger when private company merge with public company when private company becomes public company when small scale industry merge with large scale industry when small firm merge with a large firm then it is called as reverse merger so all these are the different types of mergers that you have to study for your examination moving forward advantages of merger so why the company go for merger as i have told you the the big giant companies the conglomerate companies if we take up under a one uh, reliance under a one big giant company there will be many businesses that will be established and that will be served to the customer so what are the advantages they are having first is economies of scale what is this economies of scale if you produce in a large scale at a time so the cost will reduce how the cost will reduce to to re, to produce one pen it requires the light and the uh, process of making a pen but if at the same time if you manufacture the large scale if you manufacture pen in a large quantity with the same amount of power with the same amount of human resource the production will be more so this is economies of scale so economies of scale is an advantage that you get in a merger next we have cheaper finances available cheap raw materials better r and d technology marketing and distribution activity as i have told you the next advantage will be synergy if one company has a advantage the other company can avail that so both together if they combine there will be an effect synergy effect that is an advantage we have next fast growth the company can grow in a fast rate why because they can access the available if a company has a raw materials if b company needs the raw materials they need not uh, import that they can take up the raw materials from the a company itself so this leads to what faster growth at the same time they can use the resources in an optimum extent moving forward tax benefit to avail the tax especially in the case of reverse merger profitable firm with non profitable firm so profitable firm they take up non profitable firm then they have a tax benefit tax laws allow set off and carry forward losses so this reduce tax burden for a profitable firm they can avail the tax benefit moving forward the fifth is diversification so especially 
in case of conglomerate merger the merger between two unrelated firms happens the risk factor the profit of one firm can be adjusted to the loss of the other firm so there will be diversification utilization of surplus fund as i have told you utilization of optimum resources can be done with the help of merger moving forward as a, uh, as we have advantage in one hand there will be a disadvantage on the other hand disadvantages are elimination of healthy competition concentration of economic power power will invest with only few of the companies since because profit making company will be taken over by the loss making company the power will vest with only few of the people few of the companies adverse so this leads to adverse effect on national economy cultural difference between companies psychological factor conflict between top management problems due to minority shareholders so all these are the disadvantages we can see in this moving forward what are the motives why motives why merger and acquisition why the company will push towards this corporate restructuring strategy because of this expansion and growth dealing with the entry of mnc as if we have discussed this point economies of scale in the advantages synergy acquiring the competition if you can't fight just join them so that you can at least if you don't lose so with this principle they merge market penetration so usually one company will be catering particular segment of particular market so if they avail the other company they can also serve the other market other customer so in order to acquire the particular market and the customer they have a opportunity for of merger and acquisition next we have surplus resources optimum utilization of resources can be done utilization of optimum extent they can use the resources the surplus fund that is left over next organizational motive for ego satisfaction the due to size of combined enterprise due to organizational satisfaction also they go for merger and acquisition acquire outstanding management or technical personnel to acquire the technical personnel to know that to avail the human resource also merger and acquisition will happen financial motives tax planning for the tax benefit you get the subsidies and other things and sick units become viable with the merger with it can reap with the hidden benefits here sick companies will be there the reap benefits can be used by the other profit making company asset stripping so if the market value of share is quoted below the net worth it will be target for acquisition moving forward financial evaluation of merger and acquisition so with respect to financial evaluation of merger and acquisition the problematic uh, problems will come the practical problems has to be solved so you have to calculate how do you calculate so the following approaches may be undertaken to assess the value of target firm so as a company is there b company is there a company is acquired by b company so a company will become an acquirer b company will become a target company so a to assess the target company's worth to know what is the assets they have what is the liabilities are they have what is the share price what situation the company is in to understand that we need to do financial evaluation so following are the approaches valuation based on assets method in a merger situation the acquiring firm purchases the target firm as i have told you acquiring company purchases the target company and therefore it should be ready to pay the worth of the asset it should be we should know what is the asset what is the value of the company so first method is what valuation based on asset method we have a formula exchange ratio calculation so when we take up the practical problem we will understand in detail next we have valuation based on earnings the target firm may be valued on based on its earnings capacity in the earnings based valuation the profit after tax is multiplied by price to earning ratio to find out the value so what is the formula for that so based on the valuation on earnings what is the formula earnings is equal to your market price per share is equal to eps into price to earning ratio and next we have 
based on earnings earnings yield is equal to eps divided by market price per share into 100 so this is earnings yield method so we so in your examination problems will be given for 10 marks on this so how do you calculate my dear students you need to calculate the exchange ratio based on net present value method the first one the second one valuation based on eps and the third one valuation based on your market price so when we take up the practical problems in detail we will understand how to solve the problem so that's it my dear students hope the introduction class on your merger and acquisition with respect to the theory part i have explained and hope you have understood in a clear and a better way so smile is the biggest jewel people keep smiling thank you